Hello and welcome to my kitchen. My name is Denise and today I'll be showing you how to pressure can homemade bone broth or chicken stock. This is the broth we made in a previous video that I already posted and I made it in two separate videos so you can enjoy them separately. I'll put a card at the top of the screen so you can find the other one easily. Pressure canning bone broth consists of six steps and the first step is to make the broth which was already done in a previous video, right? So I'm going to call that step zero. The remaining five steps will be covered today. So that will be preparing the canner and the jars and the lids, filling the jars and preparing them for canning, processing the broth in a pressure canner, unloading and cooling the jars and the finished product, and then labeling everything for storage. Now stay tuned to the end of the video where I'll give you tips on preparing the stock in smaller quantities, getting into pressure canning if you haven't already, and other helpful advice including how to use your homemade stock. We're not, I'll include timestamps in this video for each step so you can jump to the section that interests you or replay certain sections if you need to. So let's get started. So some basic steps is to ensure the rack is in the bottom of the canner to keep the jars off the bottom so they don't crack during the boiling process. So we've strained our broth and I have one of my stovetop pressure canners here. It's just coming up to temperature now. It has the required three quarts of water inside. So I'm just going to leave the lid sideways a little bit. I'm using quart size, regular mouth jars, and new lids. Because the lids are new, there's no preparation needed, which is nice, right? For the jars, there's going to be no preparation for those either today. Because the National Center for Home Preservation has published that canning jars no longer need to be pre-sanitized if they're going to be processed for longer than 10 minutes, which we will be doing today. We'll be canning our bone broth into quart sized jars, so they'll need to be processed for 25 minutes at 10 pounds of pressure at my altitude. If we were canning in pint sized jars, they would be processed at 20 minutes. Check the USDA guidelines for your altitude to learn how many pounds of pressure you'll need for your location. Step two is filling the jars. Using a canning funnel, I fill each jar to a one inch headspace, using caution not to overfill them. If the jars are filled too much, there will be seepage during the canning process, which means the broth will leak out under the canning lid into the pressure canner, which causes the mess to clean up later on the outside of the jars and inside the canner. But seepage could also call, cause the seals to fail during the canning process, which doesn't ruin the food inside the jar. It just means that you have to use that one right away. And so you don't want too many of them to fail. I really don't want any of them to fail, but you don't want to have that happen uh, if you can avoid it and that's why you want to leave a one inch headspace. Okay so we have all of our jars filled. Now look at this. Who would have thought that you'd make such beautiful stock out of just leftover pieces, right? Look how clear that is and that's why I used a cheesecloth to strain everything out. But again you don't you don't have to can it. You can just use it fresh out of the pot and take out the big pieces and then use it for your uh, whatever your recipe calls for. So the next step is going to be, I, I dip a paper towel into some vinegar. This is just distilled white vinegar. And what I'm going to do is go around each rim to make sure that there's nothing in the way between the top of the jar and the bottom and the bottom of the lid so that it gets a really good seal. Okay, so the next step is to put on a new lid. And then we go fingertip tight. We don't crank down on these because it's going to form a lot of vacuum whenever it's inside the pressure canner. So we just want to make sure this lid stays in place. If you're new to canning, you'll figure out what fingertip tight means. And step three is processing. All right, so now let me load up this canner. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get the heat on. There's a rack in the bottom down here, just like always, in a pressure canner. So it's going to hold seven quarts, and it's free. Just a little extra effort. And I will put in the extra effort to keep from spending the extra money. So then I'll put my lid on. This is the vent pipe and when it has a steady stream of steam coming out then I start a timer for 10 minutes and then I put the regulator on. It's sitting right here. I'll put the regulator on and then it will start getting pressure. And once it comes up to pressure then I'll time it for 25 minutes and then it'll be done. So we're back here at the stove and you can see this steady stream of steam coming up out of the vent pipe. So now I'm going to start a timer for 10 minutes. And when that 10 minutes is done, we'll be back. Okay, so here we are back at the canner. 
our timer just went off and I put on a protective glove. I'm not sure I actually need to anymore, but I do. And so now you'll see we're at zero percent, or I'm sorry, zero pounds of pressure. And for my altitude, I need to be at 10 pounds of pressure. So this holds in that pressure that was evapor that was escaping, that pressure that was escaping. And so now you see it's climbing already. All right, so our timer went off a while back and our pressure has come down to zero. The, the, the canner is still very hot, but as I move the regulator around, there's no pressure. So now what I can do is open this. It's safe once, once it's down to zero and after the uh, pressure indicator has dropped. So then always when you're working with a canner, open the lid away from you because even though there's no pressure in there, it's still very hot. It has been sitting here for a couple of hours now. So I'm just going to take these jars out. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? You hear that pinging? That's the jar ceiling. It's the most magical sound in canning. That's when you know you have success. The vacuum in the jar pulls the, the center of the lid down. And that's why we leave them alone on the counter for 24 hours. And that beeping is my digital pressure canner right there indicating that it's finished so i'll open this one do you see how it's still boiling inside the jar a pressure canner goes beyond the normal boiling temperature of 212 degrees it it's a pressure canner so it's 240 degrees inside okay so it's the next day we canned a bunch of chicken broth yesterday and you can probably see it over my shoulder here and I'm going to take you over so we can have a look. We did 19 pints yesterday and if you hear that gentle rocking that's my canner over here doing another seven quarts and I have the rest of it in a stock pot where I'm going to make some macaroni and cheese. So I'm going to boil the pasta in some of this um, homemade chicken stock. Anyway stay tuned for that video. Let's go over to the counter. Okay, so here's what we have. We have our 19 pints. They're all cooled off. I've taken the bands off. Uh, wiped down the ones that needed to be wiped down. Look at that. I mean, it looks like store-bought, only better. So with the amount of money I saved by using organic chickens and end pieces of vegetables and things, the amount of money I saved by doing it myself I could have bought a new pressure canner because again organic broth in the store as you may or may not know is uh, quite expensive and so 30 quarts times maybe five dollars a quart if you go into the store right now uh, so that's that's 150 bucks and you can you can get into a pressure canner for around 150 to 160 right now uh, i can link my first one, it was a Barton. I can link that one in the video description so you can find it and uh, check it out for yourself. So if you're interested in canning, uh, then, then you can certainly get into it. But again, you do not need to do it in large quantities like I do. I know that I use a lot of chicken stock. And so I only want to do it once in a while and have enough to put in my pantry so I could just go downstairs and grab some when I need it. But you could have done this in probably I would recommend at least a, a five quart stock pot so there's enough room to get the water and let it boil without it boiling over making a mess on your stove because who wants to clean that up right um, so i would recommend at least a five quart stock pot put your vegetables uh, you know you don't have to even use chicken you can just make vegetable stock so just save all your vegetable end pieces and things and and put that in a pot and if you have a, some chicken bones and stuff you can put that in as well it's optional and just let that boil and what i did for mine is i let the chicken stock boil for i think it was two hours and i as as the water level dropped as it was boiling um, you know it, it evaporates and things and so i just added more to it not enough to where it came to the top like i always do <laughs> if you follow this channel you know i always go right to the top of the pot whatever the capacity of the pot is i'm always testing that going right to the top but i knew that it was boiling and so it was just going to boil out all over my stove and i didn't want a huge mess i did get a little mess i always do so anyway you'll you'll want to have enough room in your pot to let the water boil and not make a mess on your stove and then 
Um, when, when it's finished boiling, now if it's a small quantity like that, you can probably get away with just letting it boil for maybe 45 minutes. Uh, then let it cool. I would say let it cool a little bit. Use your spider and scoop out the vegetables and the bones if you're using them and discard those. And then make your mashed potatoes. Uh, use your stock for uh, boiling your rice. So instead of boiling your rice in water, boil it in your homemade chicken stock. Uh, your pasta. So I'm going to show you a stovetop macaroni and cheese and I'll be boiling my pasta in some of this homemade chicken stock. So you'll get to see that in another video and I'll link that for you so you can find it. Thank you as always for joining me in my kitchen today. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and consider subscribing to my channel. When you subscribe, if you leave me a comment you did so, then I'll say hi back to you. I'll be uploading more content for you to enjoy. And in the meantime, I'll pop up a couple of cards for my other videos. Until we see each other again, be safe and be well.